It took me a hot minute to do, but I have finally finished Triangle Strategy, and I gotta say that it's a damn fine game. Uh, playing on hard, as I've outlined in past videos, has made things maybe a bit more annoying than they had to be, but overall I had a fantastic time with it, and I'm looking forward to playing it again someday to see the other story routes and missions that I didn't get to do the first time around. The one funny thing about the final level, for me, was that it was probably the easiest level of the whole game. Uh, it involved killing a specific unit at the opposite end of the map from where you start, so I basically just ran all my units right into the bad guy's face and went to town. The whole thing was done in a surprisingly small number of turns. Uh, the ending I got off the back of that level though did seem kind of bleak, and I guess without spoiling anything, I have seen what the final encounter of the best route in the game looks like, and it's extremely different. So I want to replay it not only to kill that boss, because he looks really cool, but also to see what chain of events have to play out for the story to reach that kind of conclusion. I guess if you played it, you might know what I'm talking about. Uh, either way, if you like strategy RPGs, you really owe it to yourself to give this one a go. I played the Switch version and had no problems, but it's also available on Steam, so go check it out. If you've been watching these videos, you might remember that I sometimes mention my mostly stalled playthrough of Demon X Machina, which I've been sort of down on since I started, but I've slowly been picking away at it for a while and it's starting to grow on me a little bit. The writing still sucks and the missions are sort of repetitive, but if I finally hit a point where there's some actual story seeming to happen, a bit of mystery unfolding, you know, a reason to want to play through the samey missions, um, plus, if I play the game in short bursts, which it does seem designed for, in fairness, the repetitive nature isn't too grating. I've also found out by searching around a little bit that like one of the guys behind Armored Core uh, worked on it, and now the absolutely head-spinning amount of stats, numbers, and all that shit on the equipment screen make perfect sense. Uh, my opinion might change again by the end of the game, but as of recording this video, I'm starting to warm up to it a little bit. I just wish the character dialogue wasn't so fucking awful. Another thing I beat this week, um, this time on stream, are the Master Levels for Doom 2, an expansion pack of 20 maps released in 1995. And I didn't think it was possible to make Doom shit, but this manages to pull it off with some of the worst, most irritating levels I've ever played of anything in my life. Now, don't get me wrong, I love Doom, I love Doom 2, I love New Doom, you know, 2016 and Eternal. I even like Doom 3, but this shit sucks. If levels aren't pissing me off with bullshit encounters, then they are wasting my time with cryptic nonsense key hunts that have me humping walls like a dipshit for tens of minutes. Um, granted, it's a map pack with a bunch of different authors, so there's a couple in there that aren't so bad, but anything made by this dude known as Cranium should be just deleted from the game. If you select the map off the list and you see his name at the top, you just know before the screen even finishes dissolving that you're in for a bad time. The worst map in the pack is a level called Teeth that involves a central elevator and a bunch of offshoot corridors that you have to unlock from like the bottom up to get to the exit. Uh, it's cramped, it's full of strong demons, and you're constantly worrying about having enough ammo to deal with them. And worst of all, it ambushes you in a stupidly shaped room full of chain gunners, which pretty much guarantee you'll lose anything between like 60 and 180% of your health. Like, fuck this expansion, it's an absolute disgrace. The uh, final thing I wanted to cover in this video is actually a really cool free-to-play game I found on Steam called Kowloon's Curse Lost Report. A weird PS1-esque looking game that I really don't want to say too much about because it's one of those things that should be experienced with as little knowledge as possible. And what I can say is that on a technical level it's pretty jank. I had trouble navigating menus because the highlighter felt extremely stiff or like it wasn't working at all at times, and the movement, despite controlling like a grid-based dungeon crawler, similar to Grimrock or Etrian, the movement feels off, and combat prompts for doing extra damage with an attack don't make any sense at all. Although you can get the hang of those pretty quickly, given, you know, a few encounters. That said though, the game certainly has an interesting vibe to it, and it really carries it as an experience, and while the premise might be a bit cliche, the presentation is certainly very unique. 
Uh, it reminded me ever so slightly of a Sega Saturn game called Baroque, and any game channeling that game's weird-ass energy deserves at least some attention. Uh, it's not very long, and it's totally free, so go give it a try. I don't think you'll regret it. Um, really, I wish I knew more details about the developer, because when I Google Studio Notes, the top result is a website for wedding stationery, and adding the word games to the end of that search also yields little helpful information. Um, I really hope they expand on the ideas found in this game, though, because I'd love to see more from them. Anyway, that's it for me this week. Uh, after finishing Triangle Strategy, I started playing Xenoblade Definitive Edition on my Switch. Uh, since I've embarrassingly never finished it before, I had it when it first came out for the Wii, and I forget what, why it lost me way back then, but it did, so I'm giving it another shake now. And hopefully, this time I'll see it through to the end. So, uh, peace.